Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how you can take off the corbels and replace them with the corbels that I made. I made several different ones. And then we can decide what best fits for this rooftop. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is if they're not on very tight, you can just pop them off like that depending on what kind of glue it's on there and who glued them. This is a um, makeover, so the glue that's on here just seems to pop off. I'm not sure if they used hot glue or what this is, but it's not very um, durable. So we're just gonna pop those off. Now, if for some reason they are on super tight and you can't get them, then you could take a pair of pliers or needle nose pliers and you can just kind of do that. And sometimes you might have to just kind of wiggle them a little bit before you get them loose. But like I said, these were just, looks like they're hot glued, which is probably why most of them have fallen off. So there's not much to this. Um, yeah, it definitely feels like some kind of hot glue. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of them off. Okay, now we're getting to this part here. And if you notice, these are shorter than those. Okay, they're made just slightly different than the other ones. But they still will pop off the same way. And if for some reason using the pliers does not work for you, you can always take your X-Acto knife or your box knife very carefully and just go in here and just cut behind that wood until it pops off. Because remember, it's just glue. Or if you have a chisel, you can use a chisel. Alright, once that's off of there, you want to go ahead and get off any of the excess glue. And you can use a knife to get the excess glue off, or um, a scraper, or anything like that. So, I'm going to use a box knife for like a razor blade, and I'm just going to cut that off of there. Some of this glue may come off easier than others, but getting into tight spaces can be the hard part. Be very careful not to cut yourself. But you want to remove all of the excess glue, unless you plan on turning it into a haunted house or something. Then it can look rustic. If it's regular glue, you can also sand it off, but hot glue is not gonna sand off. It's just gonna make a mess. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda hang these up here so you can see, or hold these up here so you can kinda get an idea. This would go here like this, and it would glue up in there, and you would put them you know, so many apart. This one is actually a little bit longer. So if you wanted to use this style, the only way that you could do this with this particular dollhouse is to either A, have it overhanging at the bottom, B, use it on the corners as an accent piece, or widen this piece with C, or D, cut off the top of this to make it that much shorter, which would mean you would have to measure your dollhouse and cut from whatever the bottom of this is off of the top of this in order to make this come flush. Okay? Just like that. Right? Or you just use it around like your porch and stuff in areas where you would want to have longer ones. 
Same way with this one. This is too long for here. So you would have the same issue with that on that one. So maybe that's not the best one. However, you could buy this one off at the Etsy shop and then you could turn around and cut it off here and have a smaller one and then have this piece here as a separate corbel. So you could use this one for the lower windows and this part for the upper windows and the roof. So like this is the one that I used in my Beacon Hill around all of the lower bay windows. They worked out perfect for the edging that I needed. So, you know, that was great for that. But you could also use this one down at the bottom of a window if you put a wider board or if you sand at the back a little bit more narrow. And then that would work there. However, for this one, this works out perfect no matter which way you do it because you still have a good um, quarter of an inch or more there. And so does the half moon one that we started with. And since I already have a Beacon Hill with this corbel, I'm going to go ahead and do this Beacon Hill with this one because I just think it looks different. And I think I may um, come back to it and decorate it up a little bit depending on what I do with this dollhouse yet. I haven't completely decided other than it's going to be a haunted dollhouse. So I'm going to glue this here. And then the lines are marked. I didn't actually mark those lines. Whoever had the other corbels up there marked them. But they looked okay. Like they were pretty much spaced. So I'll probably just leave it like that. Since this is going to be a haunted house. It don't have to be perfect. Alright. All the old corbels you can save them or throw them away. Whatever you want to do. Um, to put mine up. I'm going to be using some universal 60 second Loctite hot glue. Or not hot glue. Um, crazy glue. Super glue. That's what I'm going to use. Make sure you have it nice and flat. This is like a gel base. So, you know, it's going to absorb in there at first. So you kind of want to just make sure you get it in that little um, spot that you're going to need it and rub it in real good and then let the glue go on top of that. Gonna follow their line straight up and then I'm gonna put it there now this crazy glue should hold better than that hot glue that was on here okay so you can kind of press it in place and hold it there but you can also tape it if you need to but it should hold pretty steadily there for that. All right, so I have them up there. They're not painted or anything yet, but here's a decorative piece. You remember on the Beacon Hill that I did, we used this one. So this one is very similar, only it's got a longer top and this is in a little bit more you know, predominant than that, but very similar. I'm gonna put these on the corner of this dollhouse. Okay, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a detailed look to it because I think it would just look better. And I'm going to bring this all the way to the edge. That way, when I put the other one on this side, it'll make like a um, 45 degree angle in between. In the same way with over here so now you have that just like that and you know I didn't take a before picture but I'll try to put a um, screenshot of it in here if I can so you can see the before and after and obviously this isn't painted but you can see the difference between those corbels and these corbels
I just think these corbels look very um, tacky and uh, yes, they go all the way down and stuff and they do actually overhang a little bit, but I don't like them. Now, I could always make these skinnier and have it to where they glue together in multiple parts like they did with the Beacon Hill. But um, I just don't particularly care for that. In my opinion, it just it's great for a rustic dollhouse um, or something like that. But I just think these look much better. You can leave your thoughts below what you think of the corbels. Okay, so now that I've got the corners on there, you can kind of see the difference in what they look like on the edges. Okay, and just as a comparison, here is the corner that I did, how it meets up, and it looks like that. And then that's the corner that they did. Particularly, I think mine look better, but I mean, everybody has their own opinion. You may think theirs looks better. Um, but that's just preferably what I like. Okay, one thing I want to show you real quick is you can cut any of the ones down. Like this here is that one. It's a quarter inch. I cut it down to about a 30 second. And um, you can glue it on the side if you want more detail. Okay, so to give you just a real quick glimpse of it again, that's what it looks like. And I did not build this dollhouse. This is a dollhouse that was given to me for a makeover. I'm going to be repairing all of this stuff and probably I'm going to turn it into a, um, a haunted house just because I already have a Beacon Hill house downstairs. But um, these are the ones I used on the edges, or the corners rather. And then I chose the really simple ones for up here. Alright, so if you like these corbels and um, you don't have access to getting them at like a dollhouse hobby shop or something like that near you, I will be putting these on my Etsy shop so that you can order them from there. And they will not be priced terribly crazy or anything like that, so... Check it out. I'll leave the link below. And also, if you order this particular style and you want to slice it down with your little handsaw, it would also fit in the corners here if you want to get rid of those pieces because it's very similar in style. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully, this tutorial was helpful. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.